Hey, what's up guys? Jerome here from the Bonsai Supply. And if this is your first time coming across this channel and you like bonsai, you are in luck because that's what this channel is all about. Now, of course, if you're a subscriber already, thank you so much for your support and welcome back. So I thought it would be fun if we covered another species in detail in this week's video. And so I chose one of my absolute favorite species for bonsai. And I believe that every single collection on this planet should have one of these in their collection. So I'm talking, of course, about ball cypress. So its scientific name is Taxadium distichum, and it is a long-lived deciduous evergreen. It is native to the uh, southeastern part of the United States, and it is very tough and very forgiving. So you will find uh, ball cypresses a lot of time in like the southern uh, part of the United States. So like starting in Houston, Texas, following all along the water, uh, you get over to like Louisiana and then you go over into like Alabama and then down into like uh, Georgia and then Florida. That's where you would see the uh, ball cypress really shine and grow in its natural habitat. And what's interesting about the ball cypress is that it is drought tolerant, even though you most of the times see, uh, or a lot of times you see ball cypresses actually grow in the water. So the trunk, a big section of the trunk is submerged underwater. So they can be grown in a, a very wet climate, but then they are also very drought tolerant, which is really cool because they can be adaptive to many climates. All right, so first off, I want to talk about some of the things that I really like about ball cypresses. And I think I have to start off by, you know, saying that a, a ball cypress is a very, very cool tree to have in your collection because you get that seasonal change, right? The change of the leaf color throughout the year. You get that beautiful rusty peach color of in the fall, which is beautiful. And then they drop all the leaves in the fall, in the late fall, and then they stay with that winter silhouette. Uh, throughout the winter time. And of course, since we talk about ball cypress, we have to, of course, acknowledge the knees that they develop, which is one of the absolutely coolest things that a ball cypress does. And, and so the ball cypress knees, although it is unknown what they actually do, uh, it is very, it's very cool looking, of course, and very unique if you have a knee on your ball cypress growing, growing inside your bonsai container. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that. Now, even though the uh, knees functionality is unknown, um, I have heard or seen that people say the uh, knees come out because um, of oxygen, like they help to um, aerate the roots or for stability. Um, either way, it is a very cool feature, but the knees are mostly seen in like swampy areas. So I think there could be a little bit of truth of either of oxygen, but also for stability so that they don't topple over when they get too old or too big. All right, so next up, we're gonna to have to talk about some of the uh, most suitable styles for ball cypresses. Um, I don't, I think there's no cooler style on a ball cypress than a uh, flat top style. If you have a, a, tr a white trunk, maybe some knees, and then that slender trunk with movement and then that uh, flat top on top, amazing. I mean, that's just, that's just the style of a ball cypress, right? But of course, you can also style it in, in different styles. You can do a weeping style, which occurs naturally. A lot of times in the swamp, you see these branches, they naturally start to weep, especially on older trees. So that would be a very cool style um, to use to make your tree look older. Of course, you can also use that formal upright deciduous look. Um, you can create a raft style. Forest is another one of my absolute favorite styles to do with ball cypress. So next we're going to talk about the uh, perfect or the ideal time of repotting your ball cypress. So since it is a deciduous tree, it would be the ideal time to repot it in the spring when the new buds start to break, right? The tree is dormant, then you see the buds starting to swell. Wait a little bit longer. Once the buds start to just, once the leaf just starts to push out and it is visible, the, the leaf pushing through, that is a great time to go ahead and uh, repot your tree. 
uh, once you have repotted the tree, as always, make sure that you keep it out of a uh, cold wind and also keep it uh, uh, above freezing temperatures. So I like to use that 40 degrees Fahrenheit number. So once I repot it, I usually keep it inside my greenhouse above 40 degrees Fahrenheit out of the wind. And then I just wait until the uh, temperatures are steadily above 50 degrees Fahrenheit day and night. And then I would move it outside into full sun. And so now we're going to cover the uh, seasonal work of a ball cypress. And once again, there's uh, four major times where we would um, wire or do heavy chops uh, on a ball cypress. And so I'm going to start out in the spring. So the first time would be in early spring before the buds start to swell. That would be a good time to get in there, do some light wiring, light trimming, and that's pretty much all the work you're going to do in early spring. Then once the buds uh, start to uh, break and the first flush of growth comes out, the, and once the first flush of growth has hardened, that would be the second time we would touch a ball cypress and do some major work to it. And that second time is an excellent time to do some large branch removals, large branch chops, and that would be the ideal time to do that. At that time, I usually also do my first trim back. So if I don't have to do major work, and I have a full canopy, I let the uh, first flush of growth harden, and then I would trim it back into shape. And then the next time, the third time, would be in the middle of the summertime when um, temperatures go into that quick dormant period. And pretty much all trees do that. Even tropical trees get into that little uh, resting period in the middle of the summer when it gets super hot, and that's a great time to go in and defoliate the ball cypress tree. You have to make sure though that you wait until it is asleep, which is very easy to tell because the tips will not continue to grow. If you see new growth on the tips, just wait a little bit longer until it is gone completely dormant. Then you can remove the leaves. And once again, you only want to do that to a very, very healthy tree. So remove the leaves. You can at that point wire the tree uh, once again or for the first time. Uh, style the tree, of course. Do some large branch removals, trunk chops. Excellent time to do that. Fourth and final time that we would touch a ball cypress during the growing season would be in the fall when the tree has reached its um, peak uh, fall color. That's when you would touch it one more time. And so you want to wait until the uh, fall color has turned from that rusty color into like that dry brown color. And when you touch the tree like that, the, the leaves will start to fall off. That's a good time to go ahead and defoliate the tree, remove all of the leaves, right? And then wire it again and do some uh, small to medium branch removals. Uh, now, and that, those are the four major times that we would touch a ball cypress throughout the growing season. But of course, in between those major times, you can of course cut the ball cypress back. I just always let the uh, branches, the new growth, harden off, turn to hardwood before I trim it back again. So next we're going to have to talk about the uh, perfect placement for a ball cypress. Don't overthink it, it's very simple. Ball cypresses love to be grown in full sun throughout the entire year. So like I said before, um, during the repotting uh, season, uh, once you repot it, put it out into full sun when those night temperatures are steadily above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, leave it there in full sun. The more heat and the more sun that you can give to your ball cypress, the faster it will grow, the healthier it will become. And here's a little trick. You may have noticed that when it gets very hot, ball cypresses, some of the leaves start to turn brown. And there's a very easy way to prevent that from happening. And that's by placing your bonsai pot into a dish of uh, water. So take a, a shallow dish, maybe two to three inches deep, uh, fill it with water and set your ball cypress right into that dish. And I actually leave my ball cypresses in that dish throughout the entire growing season for as long as the tree is in full sun. Now that is a couple things. It prevents the browning in the summertime, but it also kind of makes a tree grow so incredibly fast. Like you can grow a ball cypress and develop it from a uh, 
pre-bonsai or nursery stock into something really big and amazing in just a short number of years by having it in a tray of water. But I do still water from the top on a daily basis because I want to make sure that the soil is evenly watered throughout, but by having it in the water, it kind of uh, resembles that swampy uh, feel for the tree where it grows in that water and it will grow so much stronger and happier. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna to have to talk about uh, one of the most important parts, which is the care and maintenance. And we are going to be talking about uh, watering, fertilizing, uh, pests and diseases. So starting off with the watering, like I said before in the repotting, very, very simple. Make sure that your ball cypress does not dry out. Keep it wet, put it in a dish of water, keep it in full sun and you are good to go. Now. What I generally do is I water my ball cypresses if they're not in a dish of water. Uh, if they are not in a dish of water, I usually water them multiple times a day. So like two to three times if you're in a very, very hot climate. Now, in terms of the fertilizing, uh, once again, super easy and straightforward. I use our all-purpose bonsai fertilizer. Um, which is a, a 18410, and I use that for a tree, you know, that needs to have a lot of growing, that needs to have a lot of firepower, right? You have a, a nursery tree and you want it to grow a lot, have a lot of branches, give it that 18410 on a monthly basis, and you can use that for several, several years. Um, but then once your tree gets to a, a stage such as this one, this tree that I'm showing right here, that has a lot of refinement, a lot of branches, I will switch to our organic fertilizer, which is a, a 835. Like I always say, I like to call it the uh, maintain fertilizer, where you maintain that growth. So that's when you would want to switch over to that organic fertilizer. I'm not talking about the pests and diseases. So we have uh, mealybugs, mites, leaf beetles, needle blight, and these are just to name a few. And so again, the way that I take care of all of my trees is the same way. I spray on a monthly preventative basis. And that way I never have to deal with anything. I never have anything in my collection. No pests, no diseases, nothing. And that is because I spray on that monthly preventative, um, just on a monthly preventative spraying just to keep everything away because I don't know what my neighbor does, right? My neighbor might have trees or bushes that are packed with diseases and insects and when the wind blows into my direction, they all are gonna come over into my backyard. And not just only do I spray my trees, I spray all of the bushes that are in my uh, bonsai garden. And that is very important to keep anything away like that. Because once you get a pest or a disease on your tree, it will set you back, it will weaken the tree, it takes a long time you know, to figure out what is the problem, how do I get rid of, rid of it, so to avoid any of this preventative spraying I use two different sprays I use a, a miticide uh, which is called lucid and then I use an all-purpose spray which is called tall star which I use for everything else and then I I switch in between months sort of and the best time to spray would be at night after sunset or before sunrise because that's when the pores of the trees are open and it can absorb all of the um, insecticide that you use to spray and so this is it for today already. And I hope that you guys enjoyed learning about ball cypress in detail. If you have any questions or comments, uh, drop them in the comment section. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you never miss out on any of our new videos that are coming out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time.